I, I love That's it. Dope. I love it. You know what That's I'm saying? Dope. And you don't get that from you know just anybody. You know the real people yeah. that come in your life and come out of your life. Those are the people that you gotta really check for because you you have expectations of having it from anybody and everybody. Yeah. yeah. This is a rare friend. This is not a guy I see every day. You know what I'm saying? Right. This is like a friend that just came out of nowhere. We had similar interests. And I was speaking to him and he gave me a gym. And I think that these things stick with me for life, you know, mm. so now I can teach my kids when they get to a certain age and give them the confidence, you know? Yes. So I'm out here stuck and struggling. Sorry about that. But I love it. I love the energy. I love everything about, you know, what you got going on. So I'm going to say, where can I get your book? Hmm. If I was yeah, able- so... Yeah, I'll say both books are available on Amazon. Um, you can do a you can do a keyword search and search the titles, or you can just search my name, the team of Cherie. They both pop up. Um, they're both available okay. and you know on Kindle or paperback. And yeah, okay. I definitely appreciate the support. Literally, um, my goal is to pay it forward. I've just been sending books to people. So I would love to send you and your wife an autographed copy of the books. You know, so, you know, hit my DM after with the address. I will send those out to you because my thing is like, again, I want to be significant. If I could just get my book in people's hand and get them to read it, it's not about making a bunch of coin off of it. If you just giving out empty words. Right. I feel like the significance is going to come when people are like, yo, I really am feeling her. Like, I believe what she's saying. I I love her story. Then later I can say, okay, now I'm right. I'll be out here writing for some coins right now. I'm just writing for purpose. So yeah, that's what I want to do. And that's, that's, what's going to take you far. You know, you, if you write with uh, intention, intentional writing, you don't worry about the money. You're already blessed. You already have a a good gem and good ideas. The money's going to always be there. I tell everybody that all the time. You don't have to worry about the money now, especially if it's not a lot of money, what would you do with 10 grand as opposed to 1 million? So if you worry about 10 grand now, you're never going to make any money. So, Come on. you know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So I look at it from that standpoint and that's, that's a good way to look at it as well. You know? Yeah, like no, that. that's dope. That's, that's good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's segue again. I, I got yeah. off what I had to, to what I had scripted down. <laughs> because i don't have no pen or paper i just do the research and then the questions come you know because i had a i had a communications class back in college and Mm -hmm. i interviewed one of my professors and uh i didn't write anything down and i got an a Mm. plus so i think i had a knack for it you know what i'm saying so uh, agreed (laughs) i appreciate it appreciate it so let's uh i see that you're into women's empowerment well just Yep. people's empowerment i wouldn't say people women. that's right. it no i like that people's empowerment yeah right right yeah i don't know if it's cultural maybe it may be black or maybe anyone but you mm-hmm. know how do you feel about the uh the link between relationships and how psychological things impact those relationships especially when yes. it's friends or husband and wife or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be how do you feel about that yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's just dive into this. That topic is a passion for me. Like you said, because I'm in, in people empowerment, right? And I, right. I do favor Black and Latino, you know, being, Absolutely. being Absolutely. you know, Afro-Latino myself. I do okay. favor us. You know, we got to take care of Black and Brown people first. And if, you know, if our white counterparts can benefit from the information, cool. But I write it and I produce it and I create for us. Um, but to answer your question about relatability, wow, like the experiences that we have emotionally, you know, the things that either we watch others go through that, you know, create perspective and create a, a vantage point for us, it does affect how we choose our mates, how we engage and interact right. with our mates. You know, a lot right. of people talk about the increase in divorce in the Black community. And we talk about, you know, how our grandmothers and grandfathers stayed together even when they weren't happy, but it was so much deeper than that. You know what I mean? Right. Like those right. connections and that family structure was so much deeper than what we assume, right? We assume based on what we see now. Now people are breaking up because it's like, oh, I don't need you. I can make more money than you. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So so we don't have the same value for one another. Right. right. We have this mentality like, I don't need you or I don't need him or I don't need this person. And that's something I'm constantly pushing to my homegirls, my homeboys. Stop living like you're not going to need anybody. 
don't let the narrative of social media and you know pop culture tell you you're not going to need anybody because you will True. you are True. definitely going to need people and so i think if we can repair that toxic relatability through our own emotional experiences and through our own logic you know sometimes it's not even emotional we just shut off logic and we're like that doesn't make sense to us so i'm not going to hear it because not right. everything yeah. is going to be emotional some stuff you're just going to have to use your your brain, you know, and now they call it uh, emotional intelligence, where they're trying to blend the two. No, some things is just you think on it and some things you feel. And you right, have to know right. when certain situations call for one or the other. And so Absolutely. I'll just use my relationship with, you know, my king. There are times where I just have to be like, Tima, shut up. Like you talk too much. Like do you know, more my listening. Wife, my <laughs> wife says the same <laughs> Like, just shut yeah. up that's right, not emotional right. that's just smart like be quiet like yeah. you know, so. but see if you have trauma <laughs> and you have yeah. ptsd shutting yeah. yourself up can even put you in a bad space yeah so you have yeah. to you have to like get out of your way so to speak and like mm. understand the situation and not be so egotistical i tell mm -hmm. a lot of people that as well like you're living off pride and ego so you're never yeah. going to get anywhere you know, you have Facts. to really separate those two things or more things and mm -hmm. maybe even get some therapy to like kind of yeah. push you forward because you never know, you know, what can hinder you. You always say, oh, women are the problem or this thing is the problem over here. And maybe mm -hmm. it's you. you yeah. know, maybe it's your trauma. Maybe it's the baggage that yeah. you bring. So, you know, I'm starting mm -hmm. to learn that, especially with my, my queen today. Like, yeah, she she really put me on a path to really look at things in a certain perspective because I was one of those guys I was out here with women like over here all the time and women over mm. there like any other young man I'm a little mm -hmm. older as well so I'm like nah I gotta really sit down and weigh my options and figure out yeah. what I want and what I you know want going forward so yeah you know that's why I asked you that because there's a standard people put on their relationships mm -hmm. and, and I think that you shouldn't do that I think if there's no connection then just let it be you know just so, let it be yeah, yeah and like yeah. you said I think it's we we have to get to a place where we're willing to be vulnerable you know exactly. like you said pride and ego is really keeping us from admitting when someone's hurt us or admitting when we feel scared right. you know what i mean right. i tell my i tell my king all the time i'm afraid to mess this up i've never had anything so strong and pure before my relationships have always been toxic and i thought that that was love i equated that to love because like you said that's what i saw i saw right. abuse i saw neglect i saw infidelity and those relationships lasted. So I was like, oh, that's just what relationships are supposed to be. No, it wasn't until I got into a safe place and a safe relationship with my, my husband now that I recognized, no, it's okay to admit that, you know what I'm yes. saying? I'm not, I'm not ready for something or, you know, right. something's too, it's, it's too much for me. Sorry, his right. music going off. Um, it's all good. But, yeah, but no, but you know, like you said, it's it's losing the pride and the ego and replacing that with vulnerability and trust. Yes, yes. You know, we don't trust a lot of people because you know we've trusted people in the past and they've abused that or they've right. broken that trust, but it doesn't mean the next person is going to be the same. So. And also I think it's a level of understanding. Like I tell people all the time, don't jump in a relationship until you work on yourself. And working mm. on yourself doesn't necessarily mean increasing your financial stability or or hitting you know, the gym <laughs> right or doing things like right. that it's it's right. really like getting to know who you are being aware of who you are and yeah. then if you don't like who you are to set new goals new preferences so how you can be a better person and then maybe you can incorporate a, a, a woman into your life that can help you grow because you should mm -hmm. be helping you. i heard will smith say jada doesn't help him love her he loves mm. himself mm. and in loving himself in turn, the bonus is loving his queen. Yeah. And I think that that's very impactful in relationships. You have to mm -hmm. love yourself inside and out. If you have mm -hmm. an insecurity, work on that. If that's you have right. an issue, work on that because you can't love properly. I see relationships break up all the time because mm -hmm. people don't really love themselves. You know what I'm saying? Right. They try to blame the other person for their indiscretions. No, it's mm -hmm. you. So right. you have to really work on what you got going on, I believe, and then mm -hmm. you can grow with someone because it's that's, not easy. That's so true. Yeah. And like you said, when mm -hmm. you love yourself, it's actually going to change your taste in who you attract, you know, absolutely. Having, having done the intrinsic work, 
having done that inner work, my taste in men changed immediately. Cause it was like, you know what? I don't even like this kind of dude anymore. I'm looking for this kind of man. You know what I mean? So no, I totally agree with you. Because my, my my whole thing is I used to look at the outside, the exterior of a woman, right? Just like what you just pointed out. Yeah. And my wife, if you if you ever get to meet her, she's the complete opposite of what I was used to. Mm. And the reason why was we were great friends years before we even, you know, said anything like this about yeah. one another. And I think that that helped us become even better. Mm. Now there's no more ego. I'm not afraid to tell her, hey, have you been cheating on me? Or hey, have you been doing this? Without fear that she might mm. overreact. And I think it's wow. because of our friendship that we can have those relationships, you know what I'm saying? And that type of conversation. Because the other girls, I used to ask them questions like that and they losing their mind. I'm like, whoa, that's a good question. Right, so, right. You know, I think you need to have that in your relationship in order to move forward so you can stop that cycle, you know, that damaging toxic cycle that puts yeah. us in a bad space. I see a lot of guys, they're 50 and 60. And they don't want nothing to do with a woman anymore nothing. because yep. they're too afraid that, you know, are basically themselves. They don't really know mm-hmm. how to differentiate the two. So, yep. you know, I, you know, I'm definitely, definitely working on that and trying to help other men out, but it That's can't hard. be a million, yeah. can't be a million me's, you know what I'm saying? They gotta, right. be, people gotta run their own marathon in life, so to speak. So not only that, but that accountability needs to kick in, right? It's a lot of dudes out here talking about, oh, they want to be better men, but are you really investing your time in the work? You know what I mean? You have to change right. habits to <laughs> right. change results. You know what I mean? Right. Like you can't right. say you want to date better and you want to date in, you know, with, with intent and you haven't done any work to look different in the dating pool. Like you still look the same. You still act the same. You still think the same. Those things right. have to change. And when I say look the same, like you said, I don't mean physical appearance i mean your aura will change your energy and vibration will change you right. know what i'm saying a lot of people connect because they're vibrating on the same frequency and so that's why they're connecting they're broken they're toxic they're angry i remember there was a season on social media where it was a trend to to you know post about how toxic you are and i'm like what are we doing why but are we not only in, but you won't go get help but you won't change it <laughs> You're laughing at it. You're getting likes off of it. You're getting follows behind it, but you're not saying, but here's the caveat. I want to change. I want to grow. I want to heal. Right. Like we're not doing that. We're just, we're laughing at, oh yeah, I'm toxic. I don't trust nobody. Or I'm toxic. I cheat on everybody. Or I'm like, no. And this is why, like you said, you have grown people, men and women who are going to be alone until they do that work. Yes. I also believe going forward, that your energy is going to reincarnate. You're going to come back and have those same issues again until yep. you finally figure it out. And maybe Recycled I'm, energy. Yep. yep. I believe in things recycling. like that. Like a lot of people hear yeah. me when I say that, but I really truly believe that that energy, because yeah. energy just shell dies, but not the energy. So you're going to come back with that same mindset. You might be Asian yep. the next time you come back, but you're going to still be just as ignorant. It's not going to yep. make a difference. So we got a lot, we like got my, a lot of my, work. Like my husband says, he always says the host will die, but the energy it keeps it Never. keeps reinventing. So you know what I'm saying? It just yes. transfers. It can't be yes. destroyed. It only transfers. So the host that was hosting, the person that was hosting the energy will probably die in their, you know, yes. in their space. But the energy is gonna live on, like you said. No, that's always. good. Yeah, always, that's good. Always. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, you know, I like I don't get to have these conversations with mo- with a lot of people outside of my wife. Yeah. So it's good to have this, you know, this back and forth with you. Yeah. And you're, it's very similar. Like the convo, like it's very similar to what we talk about. And we talk for hours. I'm telling you, hey. break night. <laughs> you'll go to work. She'll be like, oh, snap, it's three in the morning. I got to go to work in the morning. And I'm like, well, I mean, what do you want to do? And she's like, well, fuck it. Let's just keep talking. And I'm like, all right. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Like you that. sound like us. That's us all day. Like we talk all you. day as if we don't live in the same house and we don't already do life together. Right. Like he'll leave right. for work and call me and we be on the phone right. all day. And then all walking day, through the door, we still on the phone. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. <laughs> but that's healthy. That's a healthy relationship. Very, I remember very. when I got out of my last relationship, I said, I promised myself my next relationship 
will be my best friend. I got to be friends with him. I was yes. not friends with my exes and it showed in the, the lack of respect. It showed in the, the lack of consideration and care because when right. you're friends with someone, it's beyond that infatuation and that attraction. Like you deeply care for the person, you know? Right, And right. like, like my, my husband, my king, that's my, that's my best friend. Like we can fight and disagree rather. We don't have fights anymore. We have disagreements, but we can disagree and I'll be hot. Like, whatever, I ain't saying nothing. You know, that New York in me, I'm like, right, I right. nothing. <laughs> and he'll come right over and just, he don't even have to embrace me all the way. He'll just touch my shoulder and all of that hard shell will just melt right off. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what? I don't even want to be like that with him. Right, I don't even right. want to be hard and angry and standoffish. It's no need. I can trust him with my heart. And so that's, that's what I wish for a lot of women. I really want that for a lot of women. I do. But they got to do, do the work. Too. Yeah, because you yeah. see, a lot, like, I, like I mentioned before, a lot of people have trauma. And they're not ready to deal with that trauma. And that's that, that's a that's a big step. So I get it. Yeah. yeah. But when yeah. you're looking around trying to find out what's wrong with you, the mirror is right that's there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if you're blaming your you even if you have to blame your mom or your dad for your condition, mm -hmm. blame mm -hmm. them. It's not to say yeah. that you're holding them to a certain level of accountability, but you need to get past that hump. Yeah. You know, so yeah, therapy will point out that you need to go back and, and question them and say, well, hey, you know, what was messed up with y'all that imprinted on me? Because exactly. now my relationships are not working out and I don't understand mm -hmm. why. And I went to therapy right. and the therapist is, therapist is like, well, maybe it's your early on upbringing, you know? So, it started here. Exactly. Right. Yeah, you know? so, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look yeah. into a lot of things like that because I got a little therapy before and I was like, whoa. Yeah. Oh, it is my conditioning, you know. Yeah. So you know, yeah. a lot of people don't realize that that's what it is for them. So they gotta mm -hmm. really go back to the drawing board and figure it out. Yeah, you know? agreed. I think yeah, there's like yeah. there's so much in life that is intentionally taught, and then there are those things that are subliminally caught. Right? Our parents don't mm -hmm. mean for us to see everything, but the things that they cannot hide from us, you know, that those are right. the things that become innate. Those are the things that become a part of who we are and our thinking without even knowing it. Like without right. knowing it, sometimes I emulate my mother and then I catch myself like, oh, that was such an Angie move. That was so something my mother <laughs> would say or do. And I right. don't even remember actually her telling me, respond like this, do this. It was just simply watching her in life. And so that's why I'm so careful with our children. Like, no, nah, I don't want them catching certain things. And, you know, we're big on talking about generational curses, but who's doing the work to break them? We have right, all of these exactly. great mantras and all these great, you know what I'm saying, posts about that they exist, but what are we doing to actually break them and then heal once they're broken? Right. Because exactly. that's going to leave something in us. Like, you know, if you break something and it's attached to something, oftentimes there's a piece left in what it was attached to. Absolutely. So you can break it all you want and claim it and affirm it, but you still now got to do the repair. You got to fill that hole yep. with something healthy. So, Yeah. I agree. I definitely yeah. agree on that. And, you know, I, I'm glad I could touch base with you and talk about these things yeah. because it's good hearing it from another source, you know? Yeah. And uh, hopefully going forward in the future, we can have more conversations that, you know, people are afraid to have, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, because these are touchy. These conversations mm -hmm. are very touchy, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to get personal with anybody, but, you know, you have your boundaries and then you have what you can talk about. So right. I respect people's boundaries as well. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I just like this positivity and these things like that. Cause we talk about so many common things that don't help you grow. It's like, right. what you, like you're sitting there all day outside and you're talking about gossip. It's like meaningless. So right. I can respect it. You know, no fruit. There's no fruit in talking about the lives of other people. If you're not going to deal with your own life. So no, I agree. And I would absolutely, absolutely. love to, to collab and have you and your wife on our podcast uh, we'll be launching Absolutely. that hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I would look because it really is focusing on rebuilding the black family, because I believe if relationships are healthy, well, marriages will be healthier and then families right. and communities will be healthier. And that's my goal. I want a better world, a better community for my kids. I might not be able to impact the globe, but I can impact where my children have to grow up and where they have to go to school and where they have to date and interact. So, and yeah, it starts I there. absolutely love. Yeah. It starts yeah. there. You know, you can't affect everybody at all at the same time, but you right. can start with your community. So, That's it. you know, it starts there and, and there's nothing better than that. 
And like you yeah. said before, you get your energy will attract like-minded people. You know, like how we came about. Like I never, yeah. like I said, I've been following you for a while, but I never knew that you were this type of person. So I would have never imagined, you know, but yeah. you, we came to one another and it's like, look at this. Right. This is something beautiful in the making. So it's like, I, I love this energy. I love this positivity. And I wish more people were like this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think that when people wake up or figure it out, that they'll be mm -hmm. better off. Mm -hmm. And let I'm their saying. guard down. I think that's what it is. People are so afraid to get hurt. They're afraid to get, right. you know what I'm saying? They're afraid to be taken advantage of. They're afraid to be embarrassed. And um, I, I tell my my husband all the time, like we have to be open to networking and meeting people. I remember posting a few weeks ago, the best thing you can do for yourself, your business, your brand, your platform is to lose the no new friends mentality because you don't know who is going to be an intricate part in the next level of your life. You don't Absolutely. know who's supposed to connect you. I believe Absolutely. in power connectors. I believe there are people who are going to put me in positions that the folks I knew before couldn't. And it's not right. that you cut them off and let them go. You keep adding to your network. You keep adding to your community. You keep adding to your village. And so I'm always open, like you said, to networking. And you can read energy. I can tell if somebody's like, nah, this, this you know what I'm saying? This dude is about games. He's trying to, right. you know, be inappropriate. I can tell from right. even our interaction in the DM, it was always appropriate. It was always respectful. And of course, you know, my husband knew about it. I was like, hey, look, you know, he said, yes, I could be on his podcast. This is dope. Right, you know right. So having that open communication with your mate, you don't have to worry about, you know, anything being off. So. Absolutely. My last question, I should say, yeah, yeah. this is a <laughs> podcast about hip hop, rap, whatever genre of music, acting, mm -hmm. whatever you can do. Mm -hmm. Are you into rap or into music? Of course, most people are, but are you yeah. into music and hip hop and stuff like that? Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm old school all day. I'm old school. Like my, my husband makes fun of me all the time because I refuse <laughs> to come past like 2004, 2003. Like, I mean, I listen, I give, I give some of the music now a chance. I will be open-minded and he'll play something for me. And I'm like, okay, but I am so old school. It's ridiculous. I'm so tied to the old school. And it's funny. I remember um, having this conversation with my dad. He, he really taught me a lot about music. My dad's been in the music industry my whole life. Shout out to my father, KHX entertainment and nice. um yeah he's a producer writer composer okay. he does it all he's worked with some really great artists so I grew up meeting you know Mary and Lil Wayne and all these people and it was like oh okay you know it's just another celebrity nice. with my father but right, um, right. I remember he taught me that you know rap music and hip-hop and where hip-hop was the culture of rap music I used to think they were two different genres I was like oh not rap hip-hop and he goes nope nope the two are married you know and he broke right, that right, down right. for me and it gave me a new appreciation for not just the sound and the artistry, but even the culture that it created for, for the Black community, you know, being Absolutely. a platform for us to tell our stories and for us to, you know, really talk about and discuss the issues that affect us. Um, right. So I, I just, I fell in love with true traditional hip hop. I know I sound like homegirl from Brown Sugar, but um, I love that's, that's what I my love heart it. is. Yeah, yeah, I so, have a heart for it. So let me ask you this. I ask a lot yeah. of people this. What was the first moment you had that made you basically kind of fall in love with hip-hop oh god I gotta pick one okay uh, I guess give I me give me give me three give me okay three. um so of course you know anything the first time I heard Nas's voice I don't okay. even remember what song was playing and I know this is probably my problem my dad's probably like oh come on you're embarrassing me I don't even remember the song my dad was playing, but I just remember asking, who is that? It was something about his voice that I yeah, was like, that okay, I'm, dry, raspy he, voice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. not even just the, the sound of it, but the pain behind it, the realness mm. in it, the, 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 the way he structured his rhymes was so different from everybody else that was out at the time. And right. so I remember falling in love with, with the, the music at that point. Then I got introduced to artists like Talib Kweli and Common and, you know what I'm saying, and Most Def. And of course, he doesn't right. go by Most Def anymore. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Yassin these Bey. artists, right, they <laughs> began to 
they begin to be a part of my everyday life. Like I woke up hearing their music, whether it was my older brothers playing it, getting ready for, for work and school, whether it was my mm-hmm. dad playing it, picking us up to take us to school. And literally it just, it kept growing. Then I added Jay-Z to the, you know, to the catalog yeah. and I added all these different artists and fell in love. And then when the women, you know what I'm saying? MC right, Light right. and Queen Latina, like oh, man. it just kept growing my love. So I can't even pinpoint just one moment. It was it was like falling in love every time. You know right, what I mean? Right. Every time a new song came out, every time a new, you know, topic or trend or whatever, it was like, oh my God, there was always an artist that was delivering on it for us, for the community. And you right. know, New York, we had a different connection to hip hop. It was just a little bit different. Like we had a special reserve spot in the heart of hip hop. So. I believe it's because it's the birthplace. Yeah. You know, yeah. so for us, it was like getting a front row seat. Yeah. And everybody else had to go get the DVD. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. My sister, exactly. I, have, I have older siblings, and yeah. my sister, she went to Kennedy High School. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Kennedy. Mm-hmm. And she was in Cypress with Dougie Fresh and KRS One. She was like literally standing yeah. right there. You know, because she was like, she's from Alaska. They moved from Alaska to New York uh-huh. in the early 80s and late 70s and stuff. And she was a white girl, basically. But she was so pr- into hip hop because my older brothers were into hip hop. Yeah. So she she was, she was would tell me stories of how she met Daz Effects and Queen Latifah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, you met these people? See? And then one day she brings soul to soul in the fucking house. You are kidding me. I swear <laughs> to God, bro. I swear I would wow. never forget that. I had to be like four years old. Wow. And, and I'm in the tub and I'm looking at these two women and I'm like, who the hell are they? I'm crisscross. And then, you know. You right, know exactly. Right, right, right. And I'm like, wow. I, think and I was then in I my digital out, underground phase back then. And that's when I was into oh, that. Wow, that's, that's, yeah. wow. That's, that you're taking me back, digital underground. Whoa. Okay. It's so right. aging myself. But yeah, like. Oh, no. Nah, we, I, I could tell that we are, we're up there and it's, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we still look good. We're still beautiful. Yeah. So. Agree. You know, Agree. Yeah, ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Nah. You know, and we yeah. we still can adapt to what's going on today, especially me. Yeah. Like a lot of yeah. artists, they ask me to manage them, and I'm not really into management anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't even mm-hmm. record music, but if you ask me to, I'll pull yeah. up. But yeah. um, I'm more into the broadcasting thing. I like to do the back and forth. I think it's more intimate. Yeah, I think it's that more, exchange. You know, yeah, you know, I don't like mm-hmm. the, you know, it's, it takes a lot to put a record out or mm-hmm. especially be real with people. And people are, you know, they're afraid to grow a lot of Mm -hmm. artists today they stay with Mm -hmm. what they know they talk about you know what we always did drugs women Mm -hmm. x y and z and you know tell a story tell a tell a real story i mean we know we all came from the mud we get it right tell a real story that separates you from those artists and i think they're afraid so that's what makes me not want to be too involved with rap yeah um, as far as the broadcasting aspect and being a host and being this Mm -hmm. you know having this intimate vibe i like that more yeah yeah you know so, and it's gonna it's gonna open up i could already see that this is gonna this is gonna be a huge platform and i'm speaking that into your life like that you know it. god began to open doors that. for you because we need more and i'm not trying to come for celebrities but how many more podcasts do we need of celebrities talking to other celebrities like it's enough of that we need people like you connecting with real everyday people right. who want to be significant who want to change who want to grow who want to you know give back to their community you know give back in any way they're not getting the exposure they're not getting right. the opportunity to tell their right. story because again these major platforms just keep bringing on existing celebrities and it's like Okay, we know their story, but let's talk about the people behind that. Let's talk about right. the people doing the work in the community, getting their names out there. You know, so I I, I absolutely respect what you're doing. I applaud it, and I'm appreciate certainly going to support it and shout you out and share and get I people to follow. It. So yeah, yeah, you Definitely. know, it's crazy you say that because one of my favorite podcasts is Drink Champs, mm. and that's when I got the idea to do my podcast. I was like, I love what Nori's doing. But like yeah. you said, they're doing pre-existing people who already made it and have a story. And we right. love to hear those stories. Yeah, I love, we, you know, yeah. we weren't there, mm-hmm. so we would love to hear it. But yeah, what about the little guy? What about the up and coming person that's right. not really there yet? And I figured, you know, right. let's give them a platform to tell their story 
because it's, if you look back in my archives and my episodes mm-hmm. since I started, mm-hmm. some great stories in there, you yeah. know? And if you can find a person who can ask the right questions, I think you can yeah. get far with that. So mm-hmm. I definitely, definitely appreciate what you said. Yeah. And, you know, the blessings and all of that stuff. And uh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep working. I take a lot of breaks. That's my problem. Yeah. I take mm-hmm. a lot of breaks because I'm working on businesses and stuff. Yeah. But I'm back now. You're the first uh, person that I had on here since I, Thank since I got you. back on. Thank and you. And I'm going to be more consistent. So, you know, a lot of good things are coming. You're welcome. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to be shouting you out. I'm definitely going to be encouraging people to, to you know, Absolutely. flood your page, to show you love. Um, because like you said, I agree. I'm I, I'm not at all mad at celebrities. They, you know what I'm saying? They, they got there where they are because of their work. So I'm not right. mad at that. But like you said, I want to give attention to those who may not ever get the opportunity to tell their story. Like you said, sometimes just being asked the right question will help you to tell your story. Some people just don't know where exactly. to start. So just one yeah. question. Yeah. We'll get them going. So yeah, I, I applaud I applaud everything that you're doing and really appreciate, appreciate I'm you. honored to be your yes. first guest me, back. Yeah, yes, thank me you. too. I'm honored for you, <laughs> you know, taking the time because, you know, you have a lot of things going on and for you to yeah. reach out to me and want to get on my platform, yeah. it says that I'm doing something right and you respect it. So I really appreciate Definitely. you, you know, reaching out, you know? It's been a uh, pleasure. Yes, it has. And uh, hopefully we can grow more in the future. Like you said, I, me and the wife, we can come on your your you guys' podcast. Yes, we travel please. a lot, so okay. I probably well, I wouldn't say anytime soon, but I'm gonna probably be be traveling, and we might pull up on you. You never know. But, Listen, um, come on. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. I've been to yeah. the A once or twice, so I know my way around. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But um, I, like I said, I appreciate you. Um, it'll take me about a couple of days to do the editing, but okay, um, no I'm gonna. I'm going to chop it up so it, you know, yeah. we can tell the stories more and it can make more theatrical and more, uh, give more of a, a, a vibe. So dope, once I chop dope. it up, I'm going to post yeah. everything up and then, you know, you can go crazy from there. Yes. Well, I can't wait. And like you said, you have plenty of content on the page to, to share now and to get people excited yes. about what you're doing. Um, yes. Definitely. As soon as I get off here, I'm going to run to the husband, let him know we got to have you and your queen on. We would absolutely, absolutely. love that. Um, absolutely. Our platform, just for you know, for you to know, is called Not Martin and Gina. We're talking about that 90s sitcom love, getting back to the roots of when love was popular on television. We're right. trying to make love and relationships dope again. So definitely love would love to have y'all on there. The podcast is called Apartment 42. Um, so we're excited. It. Yeah, thank it. you. We're that excited. sounds dope. That sounds dope. And she, see, the crazy thing is, she's a little camera shy. Okay. But we were supposed to do a podcast as well. Yeah. So once we launch ours, you already know the vibe. You already know we're going to definitely reach out. So definitely. Well, let her know that I'm going to need her to let that go just to do our show. Tell her because our show is live. We're going to have y'all live. Um, I, bet. But I would love, love, love to have her on. I mean, I can only imagine how amazing she is just looking at you. And I always know your partner is as strong as you are. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So same for same for my king. So much respect and, you know, salute to your queen. Definitely appreciate Absolutely her sharing your gifts with me and the rest of, you know, uh, social media. So right, right. I appreciate the time. No problem. So listen, I'll see you soon and uh, yeah. I'll get you these videos as soon as I can. And um, yeah, we'll just continue to do the like, share, comment and support thing. You I, I definitely Absolutely. got you. Yep. You got you it. Same a... here. You too. All have right. a great night. Blessings you to your too. family. All right. Good now. night. Take it easy. Good night. Okay. So you already know the vibes. It's your boy, King Swift. We had a a very, very good, good interview with the lovely Natima Sharif. She had dropped a lot of gems on me. She's a very, very uh, smart and intelligent woman. And she has a lot of things to bring to the table. Check out her book. I'm going to reference it in the the video. Check out her book. Also check out her uh, Diamond Riders. And um, I am your boy, King Swift. You already know the vibes. Bars on deck. I got merch, y'all. You need some merch. Let me know the vibes. You can definitely do that. And um, see you when I see you, man.